Oh mein Gott, oh mein Gott, oh mein Gott, oh mein Gott, oh mein Gott. Oh, hello everybody, uh, welcome to a very murky day uh, here in the kitchen. I'm sorry, it's quite miserable and raining outside, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we've got some fun today. Now you might remember the other day I did a giant Lindor. <laughs> I think some of you were saying, it's not a giant Lindor, it's a giant lint ball or something. Basically, there's a company called Quality Street here in the UK, very popular around Christmas time, that make a tin of sweets. There's so many ones, there's a green one, there's a yellow one, they do giant ones of all of those as well. And indeed, inside, it's just small ones. So I have it on a quest to find it. Come on, it's got to be down this hole somewhere. Sorry right. about that. That's all right, no problem. I don't, I don't think we've got it off the, off the top of our head. That's right, my little old hometown supermarket did not have it. Even though it's, you know, it's a fairly good sized store. Disappointment, we ordered it online and... I actually ordered two purple ones, just in case we make any fails like last time. So Quality Street, it's not just them, remember they're not sponsoring this video, it's uh, like uh, celebrations, roses, like uh, just a really legendary thing that most people have at Christmas time, just sort of to munch on and just put on a lot of weight. Inside of Quality Street, oh these are good, the orange ones, uh, there's a green triangle, they do a giant green triangle I think, so maybe I can do that one as well. I don't want to really do all of them, but, oh, I've noticed this recently as well. The purple ones, my favorite ones, seems to be less of them. Ah, there we go. This is what we're scaling up. Let me show you the anatomy. All right, so you've got your purple one uh, like this. Apologies for the lighting in here today. It's a little bit dim. Oh, why has it got pit? I've never seen that before. What? It doesn't normally have that wrapper around it. But there we go. It's kind of like, why do I want to call it like the Sydney Opera House shape? That's nothing like the Sydney Opera House at all. Just loads of little bits of it. Uh, like an armadillo, isn't it? Chocolate coating, and inside is a nut, and it's surrounded by caramel. That is it, we've got three different parts. Why have one that size when you can have one this size? Uh, and it just contains lots of little ones. And I do just totally want to check, is that, oh my gosh, no, this is new. They've got, they, I swear that was never there. Are there any quality street experts watching this? Maybe it's like an additional, oh. mm, doesn't matter. So the purple one has got three key elements. The tempered chocolate outer shell, a gooey caramel center and a massive nut. But before we crack on, we actually need to check that the shape is gonna be okay. Otherwise I'll need to go to a hardware store. <laughs> yep, there it is, like a little hedgehog. Ooh. Okay, cool. Wow. I am suddenly very, very hungry. Uh, this is perfect. This is the, the right size. Uh, although there is a little bit of a divot here, we might have to level the chocolate off in there. I think we're gonna be all right, guys. If we can get this all to flow as I'm hoping for right now, it might all seal and cool down together as one and effectively potentially not take a massive amount of time. Ah, let's do it. When I made the giant lint, uh, I got this chocolate, which was really good, the Kuvertier stuff that tempers really well and gives it that amazing shine. So luckily, I have some of that left over. If you temper normal chocolate, it will still do good, but this stuff is donking. Right, boy? No? Get ourselves a pan. A bit of water in the pan. We get that warming up. Grab our bowl. Make sure the bottom of the bowl never touches the water, right? Just as an aside, it was fire at night here the other night and uh, Phoebe saw something on telly about how your dogs, you can make them feel better and more safe with fireworks because it scares them by building them their own den, effectively a box with a blanket in. And Boston absolutely loves it in there. In fact, he sleeps in there now. I think Amy and Boston had a bit of a falling out. So that water is going to come to a simmer. Oh, in they go. Oh, look at this already. Beautiful. All right, so remember we want to get up to 45 degrees at first. All right, let's go. 45. Oh, and leave to cool. Right, the nut. When it comes to the nut, you know that I am a bit of a movie nut for Star Wars. Who remembers the video I did where I made a chocolate edible salted caramel Death Star with a Ferrero Rocher inside? <laughs> This is pretty much a Death Star mold, right? But 
it's gonna make a nut. Chocolate's still got 10 degrees to go, so we've got plenty of time to do this. In this mixing bowl, I'm adding chopped hazelnuts. Sugar. We're gonna warm this up and not stir it. So it will basically caramelize and it's very hot and dangerous. So please be careful. All right, that did not take long at all. This is insanely hot. Okay, so take it off the heat. Bonk. Then we pour that mixture in, mix it all around. I need to do this quite quickly. Oh, yeah, can you see how it's forming together? It's sort of like clumping. This is good, we want clumpage. It's still a little hot. In about 20 seconds or so, I should be able to get it into our mold. So what I'm gonna do, ha ha ha, is start to add our nut, our homemade nut. Ah, see, it's still warm, but I can do it to the touch very quickly. I'm just gonna press it in ugh, to get its shape. Okay, this is not that hot anymore, but it's still warm. <laughs> so I um, wanna make Michael Jackson noises, but there we go. Oh, half of our nut is done. I'm gonna repeat that with the other half. Which annoyingly has a hole, so I've plugged its bum with some kitchen towel, but you get the idea. <laughs> Do this with some gloves on, all right, if you're sensible. Ah, ah. It doesn't look like it, but that's gonna be a nut. <laughs> huh? You see? But, yeah, it's not fully bonded, so we've got some melted chocolate here. Let's use it, let's use a little bit. A little bit on there. We'll sit this back on top. Well, I'm gonna get this in the fridge just to firm that up and it should pop out easy. You know, it's only dropped by about a degree during that whole process of making the uh, nut there. So we should get on with our caramel. So there's a couple of different ways to make caramel sauce. This is quick, it's gonna get very hot, a lot like uh, we just did for the nut. Uh, and it's important it's cooled down so it doesn't destroy the whole thing. For our caramel, we need a lot of light brown sugar, pretty much a whole slab of butter and 400 mils of single cream. Let's do it. Low flame, and I'm being lazy. I'm literally gonna stick that whole block of butter in like that. I'm basically doing that because you can make yourself look like a magician, look. <laughs> oh no, got butter on my phone, didn't I? All right, so it's nearly there now. We are now adding in our light brown sugar. Uh, light brown sugar is really good for fudge and stuff like that, so. Uh, we need to let these guys mingle together. Obviously, if you wanted to make this salted caramel, yeah, just add a little touch of salt right now would uh, really take it up another notch. All right, so now we add in the cream. I've taken it off the heat so it's gone a little quieter. Oh, look at that. I'm making a cake. So back on a low heat and we stir this through. Oh my gosh. I love that marbly effect. You want to bubble it gently. Uh, I took my eye off it for like one minute and it's, it bubbled. That was what I was looking for, folks. Um, everything is going to plan. But I, I think we can say our caramel's done, okay? It's a nice colour. <laughs> In chocolate news, uh, <laughs> slightly better, we are nearly there, about two more degrees to go. Yeah. Just before I tidy that up a bit, look! Oh, <laughs> our nut! That's nuts. As if by magic, it's all tidied up. Uh, <laughs> made a heck of a mess. Anyhow, the chocolate, back onto heat. Getting up to 32 degrees. Once it's there, we'll leave it to cool down and we should have some nice tempered chocolate. Yeah, so this, uh, a bit like a dog, if you excuse the pun, is gonna be a little rough. Hey, uh, just like when we did the um, chocolate skull the other day. There we go. So uh, just an initial layer like that. It's all nice and covered. Fairly transparent in places, but we'll double that up. Fridge time. And it can go in there, uh, next to the nut. If you're wondering where the caramel is, that's actually out in the garage on top of the pizza van because it's super cold out there. As it cools down, it'll thicken up. I don't know if it'll thicken up enough. That might be cool because it'll be gooey, but if it's too runny, I'll just make another one. All right, there we go. So that's been in the fridge for like five minutes and because it's tempered, it's firmed up pretty quickly already so I can keep adding these layers. All right, so this is now the fourth, and I'm gonna go for final layer. We're gonna need some to do the bottom anyway. And it's fairly holding anyway, because it's so cold now, the mold. So let's get this in, a real good set on it, and the nut and the caramel will go in. The caramel's cooled down a bit. I'm gonna do it in little batches, 
and it'll cool with the chocolate, all right? And Mrs. Barry's home. Hello. She's just having some lunch. So here's what we'll do. We'll take the mold, which is nice and firmed up now, but we want one big final set with our leftover chocolate for the base. <clears throat> this is where I do need it to be quite level now. Okay. Just want to stop it tipping over like it just did. No, I don't want you to stand there and hold it because you're on your lunch break from work. Oh, why didn't you come back to work, Becky? Oh, because I was holding a chocolate mold? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So we're going to get a nice oozy caramel on ours. Once it chills, it will firm up a little bit more. But I quite like the idea of it spilling out. We'll see. All right. So I'm going to spoon some of that caramel into it. Oh my gosh. Bear in mind that chocolate is ice cold. It should hopefully cool the caramel down straight away. The nut goes in. Oh, it's sunk in there, brilliant. I'm like glossing this like giant nut in the caramel. It's like a little nut submarine. All right, one last chocolate layer to seal this in. Build it up from the sides. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh no, oh no, oh, oh no, my thing's spilt, Mrs B, can you help tidy, the, I've got like, if I drop, let go of this now, it's going to go everywhere, and we've got like, caramel oozing off the counter, you're a genius, I know, no, <laughs> eh? thanks, look, we're, done, we're suspending it, reminds me of the film of the flight of the navigator for some reason, the shape of what? it now, the spaceship, the flight of the navigator, you never seen Wait, that I film, know. no, don't pretend happen. that you're like 16. <laughs> now all I do is get the chocolate air on top. You can see where some of the chocolate has kind of helped. There we go. What I might do is just quickly firm these up in the fridge, these edges, for a few minutes, and then I'll just gradually work them in so we can seal that bottom in. Okay, so this has been like five more minutes, but you can see how that has given me a little bit of a surface. That's much more solid than obviously the caramel right there. So I can now continue to build up the strength here. So I'm gonna get one sort of basey bit covered, joining it onto the existing chocolate, kind of like this. It's quite cool to splatter it actually, because <laughs> the lighter it is like that, rather than dumping it on one big mass, it won't sink into the caramel, which to be fair is not the worst thing in the world to happen. We'll let that bond now in the fridge and then do one final layer and set it. All right, so I've just finished off one final layer. I'm gonna give it a little gentle tap, just to level it off a little bit. And we're gonna give it one big old set, and we'll find out if all of this has worked. <laughs> it's time to get out the mold. Hopefully it pops out with an ease. The caramel inside will not be rock solid. I just didn't like the idea of that. It might flow out if that happens. Good. Here we go. Uh. Oh. Yes. <laughs> you know, I swear chocolates are getting smaller these days. Do you remember back in the good old days? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And if anyone from uh, Nestle is watching and you'd like to team up and do a, a bigger version like this, maybe a whole giant quality street, get in touch, do a sponsored video, maybe do it for charity, something like that, something fun. If you guys just want to reach out to Nestle for me, that'd be cool. Or anyone else. <laughs> anyone else. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> the caramel will be running, I did say that, because it's, uh, you know, it needs a longer set for it to be really firm. And plus these have been in the garage, they're cold anyway. I like it gooey. But how do we? Let's try and get the nut, shall we? Oh, oh. <laughs> I missed the nut. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Oh, some of the nut has come off. Oh, it's amazing. The caramel is so good. Well, wow. another success in the bag. <laughs> Before this spills off the counter, um, don't forget to have a Barathon now and check out the rest of 1,300 videos on the channel. Uh, thank you so much for the support wherever you are in the world and um, see you next time.
Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Cyber's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. It is basically five hours later. You can see the caramel is a lot more thicker now. <laughs> so maybe I should have left it. But I can see that Mrs. Barry's been hacking away at this. All good. See you next time.